Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on now. You know what? Uh, we've been hearing all about giving God the honor and the praise, and he's Alpha and Omega, and, and, and we should be excited about the fact that we don't have to depend on nobody else to get us where we need to be but him. So, you know, I want you guys to get up on your feet because we can stand up at the football game, at the basketball game, but we want to give God the glory because he's been so good. He's so good to us, and we need to acknowledge that. Amen. Come on, y'all. And I'll feed off your energy, so give me some of that energy. <laughs> yeah. You've been so good, and I really want to thank you, Jesus. You've been so good, and I really want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good, and I really want to thank you, Jesus. I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. Oh, I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. I really want to thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. And I, I really want to thank you, Lord. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. You've been so good. I really want to thank you, Jesus. I really want to thank you, Lord. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now listen to this. You made a way where there was no way. Yet you did now. You came and joy down in my heart to say, hey, hey, hey. You changed my life, and I never will be the same. And now I've got to lift my voice and say, You've been so good. I really want to thank you, Jesus. I really want to thank you, Lord. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh. you did now, you gave me joy down in my heart to say, hey, hey, hey. you gave me joy, I will be the same, and now I've got to lift my voice and say, you've been so good, I really want to thank you, Jesus, I really want to thank you, Lord, I really want to thank you, Thank you. Come on now, y'all. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. My brother, so good, so good. My mother, my father, my sister, my brother, you've been so good, so good, so good. My mother, my father, my sister. 
sister, my brother, you've been so good, so good, so good. My mother, my father, my sister, my brother, you've been so good, so good. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Your mercy is new every day. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord will, I know, 
Somebody in the house ought to be able to say amen today. Oh, come on, say amen like you mean it. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 16 once again. We've been spending the month on the theme, Christ-like lights. And on this Sunday, we are focusing our attention on the conclusion of a story 
storyline that uh, we started last Sunday in chapter 16 with an eye towards taking a fresh look at uh, from a different perspective at this particular passage and it as we focus our attention on verses 21 uh, 25 I'm sorry through uh, 36 Acts chapter 16 verses 25 through 36 as you're turning to that, uh, focus your attention in on key verses 26, 27 through 29 of Acts 16. And when you found that in your Bibles, would you say amen? And if you don't mind, let's stand together. We have the King James translation on the screen. So as we can stand together and, uh, and just read these three verses together as family. 27 says, uh, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Uh, but Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. As, as you take your seats and we spend our time together again as family, the theme of our series is Christ-like lights. And, I, and I've, as I said before, I just want to take a moment and, and spend some time coming from the perspective of the keeper. Uh, so many times when, we, when you've heard the priest and we preach, I preach on it myself, we focus clearly and, and totally on Paul and Silas with some side impact on the, on the keeper, but I really want to come from the keeper's perspective, the keeper of the prison. Last week, uh, in our sermon, in our life lessons, we spent some time on three life lessons from Christ, like lights number two in the opening. These three, uh, let me reiterate them to you. Uh, when the enemy attacks your message, we have them on screen, and your character, let your faith in God's word shine and bless unbelievers as we looked at 16 through 18. And then the second life lesson we spent some time around was when you falsely, when you were falsely accused and persecuted for your faith in Christ, let your prayer and praise shine and receive God's freeing power. And finally, as we spent our time together as family, uh, life lesson three was when God's presence, protection, and power are experienced, uh, let your gratitude and graciousness shine and share the good news. We pick up the storyline. Uh, we pick up the storyline. Paul and Silas have been imprisoned uh, because they have cast, because Paul has cast out this demon from this uh, sorceress, Susea, young lady, and freed her. And, the, and her handlers have gotten upset at the fact that she no longer is available and, and uh, able to provide funding through her sorcery. Her soothsaying, her. Maybe she tossed a little palm reading in there, her future telling. And so we find Paul uh, having been thrust, Paul and Silas having been thrust into prison as we begin to pick it up from verse 25. They've been whipped, they've been, uh, they've been scourged, they've been scorned, you know, things, they've been cast into the lowest part of the dungeon of the prison itself. Uh, and it looks like all hope is gone. As we closed out last week, it looks like all hope is gone. Uh, they've stood for Jesus, and they proclaim the word, and they've done what God has called them to do. And yet, in the midst of that, they find themselves being persecuted for their faith. And uh, I know the texts that have been running through their mind: "Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake." They're being persecuted for righteousness' sake. And in verse 25, as we pick up. These opening verses, 25 through 31, we'll have on the screen. Let me read the Amplified for you as we just step back and do a precursor to the opening here. It says, but about midnight, Amplified, as Paul and Silas are praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the very foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once all the doors are opened and everyone shackled, were unfastened. Now when the jailer startled out of his sleep, 
saw that the prison doors were open. He drew his sword and was at the point of killing himself because he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. Uh, then the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling and terrified, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out of the dungeon and said, Men, what is it necessary for me to do that I might be saved? All three questions. And they answered, Believe in and on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, give yourself up to him. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping, and you will be saved. And this applies to you and your household as well. Life lesson one, if you're jotting. God uses the witness of our lives and the wisdom of his word to transform the unbeliever from darkness into his light. God uses the witness of our lives and the wisdom of his word to transform unbelievers from darkness into his light. Things were going, it was another day in the life of the keeper of the prison. It it was just another day. But all of this broke out in his territory. He, He has to be listening and paying attention to the fact that all this rumbling has taken place because these these, these preachers of the word of God have now shaken up the township by, by not only proclaiming this unique and powerful word about the coming, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, but, but in being confronted by this, uh, this young soothsayer, having the audacity to look her in the eye and caring, lovingly care for, enough, for her enough to be able to cast out the demon that is possessing and constricting and taking control of her lives. And this now shakes up the township. It shakes up the marketplace. And the keeper has, the keeper has to be aware of all this that's going on in his town because now they have thrust Paul in and they've whipped him, they've scourged him, they put stripes on his back. They've now put, put Paul and Silas into his keeping. They've moved him out of the marketplace of what's going on in, in the township and now placed him into the environment that he now has uh, management of. This is my territory that you've now come into. And, and giving him instructions, if you will, to cast these men down into the lower part of the dungeon. What's going on in his head? It's just another day in the life of the keeper. And yet all of this has taken place, and in the midst of all of these, these prisoners that are down there, these two now are in, in the dungeon, and, and, and the evening is going on, and he hears this praying, and he hears this singing, and he hears this praising going on. And, and I don't know what's going through his mind, but, but it's just another day in the life of the keeper. And so maybe these folk are just crazy down here in the bottom of the jail. May, may, maybe they just don't realize the, the hardship they're in, the, the, the difficulty they're going through. They've got stripes on their back. They're bleeding. You know, it's dried up on their back. Now things are hard. Things are looking hopeless. But yet it's another day in the life of the keeper. And, 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 and all of this is just a prisoner down inside of my jail and inside of my territory. Territory. And I'm wondering what's going through his mind here, Brother Deacon, as, as he's looking at all this going on and wondering, you know, I just got up this morning and was on my way to work, and all I wanted to do was take care of the responsibilities that they've given me to take care of. And so if they want to sing down there in the bottom of the jail, then let them go on and sing. I, you know, that's their business down there. If they want to be praising this God that I don't know anything about, then let them continue to praise that God down there in the bottom of the jail. I'm just going to relax up here because I know that you're shackled in that jail. I know that the doors are closed in that. Can I preach this a moment? I know that the safety lock is on the dra- on the door right there and, and ain't nobody moving until I open up those doors because this is my territory. And it's just another day. It's just another day in the life of the keeper. But, 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 but he didn't realize that God was doing something powerful. He, he, he missed the memo. <laughs> he, he missed the memo that God was about to shake up not only his environment, he's about to disrupt his whole pattern of thinking. He didn't catch the email that was flashed out to him that God is about to do something powerful in your environment today. And even though you think your life was settled and your routine has been determined, and it feels like it's just another day. Uh, God, God, God's got something powerful he wants to do in your life this very moment. And so my Bible tells me, as we were reading it together there, that, that, 
as, as they were praising and praying and, and giving God all this glory in the midst of the hardship of their circumstances while they're being persecuted, you know, in the midst of all of that, they're just, they have the audacity to lift up their voices and praise and lift up their hands and, 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 and sing and shouting hallelujah and just give God because they know that God's got a plan and purpose and this isn't the end road. And even if it is the end road, you know where you're going. And this jailer just, the text tells me that when midnight came and everything starts shaking, my Bible tells me that the jailer was asleep. He, he, he wasn't worried up to this point about anything else going on. Nobody's going anywhere. I've got my team in place. I've got my security tight. Nobody gets up and gets out of this place here. This is <laughs> because this is my environment. <laughs> I'm in charge of this house. And nobody moves till I say they move. But then God had another word for him. All that's going on down there inside of that prison, you know, he needed to pay a little attention to because God was making a message and midnight was his terminal point. And he was about to shake things up and he didn't know where it was coming from, but there's a witness of their lives and a testimony of their word that was about to change and transform his very life. And so when midnight came and all the foundations underneath of him began to shake, he didn't know what was going on. He knows that something has happened. And maybe it wasn't the first time that an earthquake had hit, but it certainly was the first time an earthquake had hit my territory. No, I'm coming to somebody's house here now. <laughs> Hardship and difficulty might be going on all around us. That might not be the first time I've witnessed that. But now, Lord, you, it seems like it is pinpointed towards my address. It just drove up into my neighborhood. You know, my ground was feeling pretty settled here, but you got the audacity to shake the ground underneath of my feet. You can shake other folks' feet, but Lord, you done came and shook my feet now, and I can feel my feet wobbling underneath of me, and my mind is shaking and trying to figure out what's going on. And then I hear the sound of all of these, uh, all of these handcuffs and chains Clapping free, something is happening in my territory. <laughs> the Lord is sending a ripple word down through there that is on its way up to you. And if you're sleeping on the job, you better wake up right now. I, I, I like the way the text does it. Suddenly, suddenly there was a great earthquake. There, you know, there was no warning coming. Suddenly, God stepped on the scene and made his presence known and began to shake the environment. The prison was all shaking and the doors were all open and, and everyone's shackles were unfastened and the jailer woke up from his sleep because God has sent an earthquake not just for Paul and Silas. Oh, oh y'all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't miss that. That, that. that earthquake wasn't just for them. That praising and singing and witnessing to the goodness and the grace and mercy of, of God Almighty through Jesus Christ wasn't just for, wasn't just for Paul and Silas. Amen. You're wondering if your light can shine and have some impact? You don't have to muscle it up. You don't have to make it happen. All you got to do is just let the light of Christ shine. You know, he's got this timing thing. You know, he's, I'm amazed at how God is, how, this, this goes way above our pay grade, but I'm just amazed at how God has a, has a way of shaping the pieces of the, of, the, of the puzzle of life and fitting them together. And I don't see this stuff. I don't know about you. Maybe you're more brilliant than, than I am. But, but I, don't, I can't see how God is, is fashioning things all around us and putting people in place and, and, and setting up the environment, somehow positioning me in you where he wants us to be so that, so that all these other components coming from all these different places somehow uh, come together around this moment in time at this particular environment so that he can bless into your life. Paul and Silas didn't know this keeper. Didn't know anything about this jail keeper. Their focus at that point, if I'm understanding my text correctly, was on the immediacy of their circumstance. They called on the Lord to handle, to bless them in the midst of their persecution. But God has a big picture. 